Hello YouTube, this is Sarmkus, and today I have another command block contraption for you. So, the with the particle command, if you are using the red dust or the mob spell particle command, you can have your own colors. And I thought this was pretty cool, and after trying to kind of figure out how to do it, um, I was a little confused because with the particle syntax here, the XD, YD, and uh, ZD there, that is what determines the color. Um, and so I was putting in values, RGB values, um, that ranged from 0 to 255, um, as shown in a video I was watching. I even entered in the exact same particle command, and while the guy was getting a nice bright yellow, I was getting just random colors. Um, and so after kind of looking into it, I do feel as if the particle command has actually changed. Um, so I have made something that will help you get the, um, the particle command that you want. Um, so I have selected a nice purple um, a nice purple one and this is the resultant command and if I do this you'll see the purple is here. Um, in order to select the RGB value I used um, Palatron um, I'm not going to open that now, um, but I've left that as a resource as um, for this, and uh, I think it's great for selecting colors as well. Um, here is where you are able to actually get the command itself. Here we are setting um, reds um, RGB value to 121, um, greens to 77. Um, actually, the zero doesn't matter for this one here. Um, and the blue for, for um, 137 and you run this command you see the um, command that you need here and but the trouble is when we shift click to get it we can't actually put the actual scores down here I don't think there's any way to do that um, yeah <laughs> which is unfortunate because otherwise that'd be really cool what this also means is that you can't dynamically change colors you have to kind of do it manually and you have to be opt um, but anyway so I also have this thing that I thought was interesting here what this does is this has um, the R value here the green value here and then the blue value here and um, we're just only setting one player this time RGB we do that and it activates this row of command blocks here and then activates this row of command blocks here and you get the same exact particle command um, I don't know it, it I, I thought this was interesting because kinda like you're parsing it kind of um, I don't know I thought it was a little fun thing I'll also include that um, over here is uh, some command blocks here that I have to show you kinda how the uh, speed value works for this particle command because on top of having the RGB values there's the speed count which you can also use to change it um, I personally wouldn't really want to change these but you know um, but before I do that let's just start this clock here and I will show you that uh, this for white um, the red dust particle command does not actually do that well um, because it chooses all these little random shades and uh, this is the white for the mob spell particle, and that's actually looking pretty good. Um, so, yeah. I did have this here up to a fill clock, and I guess it'll be alright to use, but I don't know. <laughs> um, so, the uh, speed actually affects the brightness of the particle. Um, but if we look into this here, for the red dust particle, if we have a speed of zero, it's going to be red like this because it's you know the red dust particle and that also reminds me um, when I was trying to figure out how to do this um, I thought you had to like subtract one so that red would not interfere but that is actually not true um, so I'm guessing that's just another thing that has changed so <laughs> you know um, let's do that. so in order to get black red dust with any kind oh okay again um, so if the speed is zero, the the red dust particle is red, and that is like no matter what the RGB value is, like because otherwise if this is one, as you can see, um, it'll be purple. 
the purple that I selected previously, which I think is interesting. To get um, black, it's kind of the same. Any RGB value, you can do just 0.1 to do that. Um, of course, I think you can also just do 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> Or, or maybe it was like this. No. Okay. Well, okay. But point zero one, point zero one, point zero one. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's interesting. If you have zero RGB, then it looks like it also defaults to red. Um, did not know that before. Um, but yeah, if you have the speed as a really low value that is not zero, then that will also appear black. Um, but this also works for a black for red dust. Um, for mob spell, the same thing. If or not the same thing. Um, if the speed is zero, then you have black. Um, no matter what the RGB value is. Um, so if we go zero zero zero, and then uh, one, yeah. And what if we try one one one? That gives us the white, and if we do zero, then that gives us back to black. So there are kind of different ways you can do black. Um, so yeah. So this here is the um, RGB values for the purple that I have at half brightness. Um, you'll see here it's pretty dark. Here it's also pretty bar dark, but this is for the mob spell particle. Let's actually turn these zones off. Um, and so this is what I call the true color for the uh, particle command. Um, if it's one, then that will be, then the RGB here will be the RGB that you have selected. Um, so it's this is the default kind of purple. Um, th this is what uh, that gives you over there by default. Um, here we have it brightened um, with each a value of two and two here and it's just brighter um, but what's interesting if you turn the brightness up enough you can actually change the color of the particle this here has the same RGB but we have 2.3 and right now it's doing an orange and if you up that even further um, you, you change it to green and what I thought was interesting here is that you change it, it gets to this kind of green, and then it turns back to a purple, um, but a different kind of purple. <laughs> so I don't know exactly how that relates or connects, but um, it's definitely something to keep in mind while you're doing that. However, for the uh, red dust particle here, you can just barely see it. I'll actually destroy that, but every once in a while, occasionally, there's going to be a little orange there. Um, and then for here, there's um, occasionally going to be orange, green, and cyan. Um, I think at some point cyan wasn't a part of it. Maybe the brightness here is too high, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, um, I thought that was all really interesting. Um, I don't think there's really any benefit to change the count. However, um, because if you do change the count, then what it does is it just makes randomness, um, random particles. If I go here and show you with uh, this command, I'll just uh, first change that to 1, so we have the true color, and change the count to 3, and you see it's um, all random now. If we do 0, um, it's fine. Point 0.1, um, you don't even see it, but then it, once you go to um, like one, then once you go to actually one, then you can start seeing them, um, and it's random. So I would just stick with zero. However, if you do have uh, the red, oops, the red dust, like red command, then you can have a different count. Let's see, we add six, um, and there we have more, and it's not random. Um, so yeah. I believe that's all. I will not provide a world download because I have some other creations here. Oh, I'm going to show that later. Um, but I am going to have a schematic um, for 
uh, two separate schematics actually, one for just this one and another for both of these included. Okay, so I figured that before I actually leave, I actually show you um, kind of how these work. Um, so first, what we're doing here is we're setting um, the player RGB for the objective RGB values. We're setting his score to this number here, which is our RGB, of course. Um, as you can see, the 121R, and then I'm selecting the green, and then the last is the, the blue. Um, so this here is where the commands fire off first. Um, this command uh, is just a fill command, um, filling this with redstone blocks. And then over here, what um, the very first thing is we're doing is we're setting red to be equal to RGB, um, which is the number there. Um, we are then dividing it by one million, which is going to give us um, the actual value for red. Um, so if you divide this by 1 million, we're going to end up with 121. Um, and the reason why that works is because um, what we're doing is we're doing we're using integer division, which does not give us any extra decimals at the end. And so um, we just end up with the correct value for that. It's simple, um, pretty simple. So. But then what we also do is we say um, RGB, like the original um, uh, blurb over there, um, is equal to um, itself divided by 1 million, but this is a different kind of divide by. What this leaves us with is this um, command right here leaves us with um, the rest of everything here, and so that we no longer have 121. And um, also, this one million here is a player, but that player's um, RGB value score does equate to one million. Um, so, yeah. Then I'm setting green's RGB value score to be equal to the um, to what we just made. Um, basically, the new score that is does not include the R. And then what that does, or what we do with that, is we divide it by 1,000, um, and that will give us the green value. Um, and then we do the same percent divide and uh, modular division. That's what it's really called. And that gives us the final blue value, which we can just set equal here. Um, of course, all this is using a scoreboard player's operation and uh, these are all fake players and then here at the end this is filling in um, the redstone blocks here I will probably change those to relative coordinates and yeah so um, okay um, what we're doing is we're taking the red value and multiplying it by 10 million um, so the reason why we do this is because if we actually um, do this here, you'll see that here we have kind of float values. Um, and what a float value is, that basically means we have decimals. Um, at least in this case, it, that isn't like the true definition of it, but it's pretty close enough for what we're doing here. Um, the thing is with scoreboards is that you can't actually have float values. So what this is, is actually um, I have a uh, um, little a uh, command. What do we call it again? Tell raw. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that. Um, and so, what I used a uh, online generator for this, um, and uh, it's pretty easy to figure out. But what I did, as you can see, like right uh, here, was I, as a um, kind of string value, I entered in zero point, and then the scoreboard. So. Uh, the red value that ends up here is actually like a really big number um, instead of actually a float value. Um, and so, so we multiply it by 10 million, then after that we divide it by 255. Um, that's to get us. That's the ratio that we use. Um, 
and we do that for each of these, the red, the green, and the blue, and so it's pretty simple, and of course just our tell roll command here, and what this does is this fills this back to stone. Um, wait, that's interesting, I don't need this. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll fix that. Um, th what this does is this sets the entire thing here with redstone blocks. I don't know why I have that. Um, okay, so yeah, um, that that is how those work. Again, I will leave a schematic, um, one for this one and one for this one, which includes both of those. So yeah, bye. Okay, hey YouTube, this is Sarmicus, and I have found uh, just a couple more interesting things that I would like to share. Um, one thing is is that this row of command blocks here can practically be replaced by just these two here um, by using uh, this. However, I'm not going to actually include that because um, what that means is it's going to multiply or it's going to um, do this for all of the players that are tracked on the scoreboard. And uh, if you have lots of players tracked on the scoreboard, like on a server, that can actually be really laggy. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty cool that it can actually fit into two command blocks. And uh, yeah. The other thing is, is that, um, yes, over here, um, I, I did make one change before. It um, would divide by uh, 10 million. Now it divides by, or sorry multiplies by 1 million um, when before it multiplied by 10 million and uh, that's because if you go um, if you have a value uh, of 215 and you multiply that by 10 million then um, <laughs> then you kind of go out of bounds and it returns a negative incorrect number um, so just a little less precision but it honestly probably doesn't even make a difference um, in what you see However, I did notice, um, I thought it was cool, like, kind of how it worked. Um, here we have just 0.5, and here we have negative 5, or negative 0.5. Um, and uh, here, okay, so on the uh, Java Stacker website, or, I don't know, um, but it says, Minus 1 is the same as 355, negative 2 is 254, negative 3 is 253, and so on and so forth. Um, negative 128 is like 128. And so um, 128 is 0 0.5 um, in the new ratio that we have. And so you see that they are the same here. Whereas like for here, um, for anything else, um, 0 0.7235 um, and negative 0.7235, those um, actually changes the hue quite a bit um, and then for the red dust particle it also does as well but it looks different <laughs> um, oops anyway uh, um, yeah um, that, that was all I had new to show you